Hey. Hey, hey, welcome back. It's Mr. A. Art with Anderson is live right now. I'm going to be drawing some faces today. And uh, I pulled out some sketches I have in this big sketchbook I've been doing. And I'm not going to take credit for this composition. I did draw this, but I was focusing on drawing a face in a particular style. And the reason I'm showing you this uh, drawing by an illustrator from like the early 1900s and uh, actually was born in Chicago where I am. Shy town uh, is J.C. Liondecker. But what I want you guys to see is that this is clearly a style of drawing. And so today I want to focus on a couple more simplified styles of drawing the face. There's really no one way to draw a face, but there are some strategies. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So if you're watching today, please know that there are infinite ways to approach drawing a face um, because not only is every style of drawing different but everybody's face is different and even if somebody turns their head from looking straight at you to turning to the side or just looking at the back of their head 
the thing is is there's all different perspectives to draw from so please know that these are just some suggestions I'm going to give you today accumulated over the years of you know starting off with more cartoonish stuff and then getting some more into some shading but I want you guys to know that even this with these kind of straight lines and kind of exaggerated features this is a style okay I'll pull up one more just because I have my sketchbook out same artist um, but you can really see some of these jagged lines on the side of the face that was done on purpose to have this style and these were actually fashion illustrations meant to sell clothes um, back in the 1910s and 20s but you can see that people, uh, especially artists, were very interested in simplifying faces because we don't always have to think of faces as something very complex or something that are photorealistic. A lot of people, especially when they're starting out, get so bugged out in their head, they're like, oh man, I can't draw this face realistically. Oftentimes, that's really not a desirable thing. I don't know if you've ever like looked at yourself in one of those magnifying mirrors or something like that. And you look too closely at your face and you start to see like pores and you see all this like you know all this other crazy stuff it can be kind of disorienting and contribute to a different way of an unrealistic standard for judging our own face but as an artist it's important to simplify there's absolutely no way that you can get um a hundred percent detail or a hundred percent realism in your drawings and so if you just check that off your list as like okay that's impossible like forget it okay I'm gonna show you another style uh, and this one uh, why am I blanking I think it's James Montgomery and he did a lot of like painting and illustration back during like World War one and World War two if you've seen that uh, Uncle Sam picture it's very famous oh we need to turn the mic volume up um, let's see I'll turn this up thanks Joe uh, hopefully that works. Uh, and I'm just going to be going over some of these styles real quick to give you guys a primer. But notice is a totally different material. I did this with quill pen. This is actually those pens that you dip in ink and they have almost like a little fork on the end that the ink flows in between. It's not like a ballpoint pen that we're used to. But it allows you to get these really interesting lines. But I want you to notice, look at all the white space in between each one of these lines. I can kind of bring it up closer. You know, these faces, the shadows are actually made up of cross hatching, different lines that overlay on each other. Um, and let's see, I think I might have one more I can show you here. This is also a study from that James Montgomery. But <laughs> this face is seen from the side. You really don't even see much detail. So another trick that artists use is that they are using opportunities to hide certain details in order to make our mind do some of the work. So our mind is actually really powerful. And I want you to, while I'm getting set up, I want you to think, uh, I'm going to show you this experiment um, that will demonstrate a little bit of what I'm talking about. But I want you to think about the power of your mind and what's so unique about it is that it's basically designed to see faces, okay? Even when there is not a face, all right? Your brain is super powerful for putting together this pattern. Now before we do that, I wanna show you a quick optical illusion that I really enjoy, okay? Now first, I'm gonna create a uh, a line that goes, I'm going to do this in the corner so we don't waste too much paper here. I'm going to create a vertical line, okay, right here. I'll make it a little longer so you guys can see it on the uh, thing. Now I'm going to put another vertical line, but give it a space, okay. And then a third one, just like this, okay. Now at the top or sorry, at the bottom of this first line, I'm going to draw a horizontal line right here. Okay. And then draw a line that's about the same width. And so if you can imagine a line right here, we're going to draw a vertical line down to this point and stop. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So 
the horizontal line, making sure that it's directly below this one. Okay. And then where this one ends, I'm going to draw another line about this length to where it stops right about here. And then for this other one, I'm going to do a horizontal line, but it's going to end a little bit farther. And I want you guys to see, are there any images that you see in this picture? So you can comment in the chat real quick. I'm going to wait a little bit before I reveal the answer. But if you see something other than just two, like, you know, almost like Z shapes and then an L, I want you to tell me what you see because this demonstrates something about your mind, all right? Now, your mind, think of it as a pattern machine. It's constantly looking for patterns, all right? And if you've ever seen a picture uh, of, you know, maybe a piece of toast that has a burn mark that looks like the face of somebody, um, or you've looked into a tree and you see like a face inside of it, even though it's a, you know, it's just tree bark, but there might be two little knots in the tree that have two eyes and then something that looks like a mouth. Oh, Joe Smith, he's got it. It's a letter E, right? So what I want to show is that this is the power of the imagination. What we have actually, right, are these two random lines, right? Or sorry, three sets of random shape lines. But what this does, our brain is so powerful that Joe and Antonia got it. And then I also want to give a shout out to Arthur and Roberta down there with Joe. I want you guys to know that I'm I really appreciate you guys watching today. Um, this is a thing, great work. But what it is, is your brain naturally sees a connection between these blank spots. So your brain is actually filling in blanks for you, even when you don't notice. Okay, so what your brain has evolved to do over millennia is actually be able to detect faces and almost predict where they're going to be based on a few key points. So the thing is, is if you see, let's say I put a circle here, a circle here, okay, those two eyes, you're going to be focusing on like your brain without you even noticing is going to say like, oh, there's definitely going to be something down here. Or like, for example, if I just put another spot here, 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 and here, this is what I call the snowman face. But why is it that we read this as a mouth, right? It's, three, it's a bunch of dots in a row, but we can follow this invisible path that we understand as a mouth. You're also probably going to be like, well, there's something missing, right? There's always this nagging feeling in the back of your head that these patterns need to be completed and sometimes our brain fills it in for us and the cool thing about really talented artists is that they can predict places where they can actually leave out information they can leave out something and your brain is so like annoyed and paying attention to it that it'll actually create something for you so the artist's job is actually easier the viewer will fill in a lot of the detail so think of it as like your brain is like a coloring book. It's always going to color into the lines where there's an open gap, okay? especially when it comes to faces. So breathe easy. We're going to talk about a couple ways we can take advantage of the viewer's brain so we don't have to work as hard. And honestly, it's a lot more fun and relaxing when we just kind of let everybody else do the hard work, okay? So the last thing I want to point out is whenever your brain completes a line for you, okay, that is done you know, inside your head, but what we call this as artists is an implied line. So when we imply something, right, if we imply something, we're kind of just like hinting at it and hoping the other person will get it. That's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So once you start seeing that E, you're not going to be able to unsee it, but it's a really fun thing to play uh, you know, especially if you're out sharing friends and maybe another thing you can do it next time you're on a, you know, a Google Hangout or a chat with somebody, a FaceTime, you can share this new little trick. And uh, if you want to promote the stream, that would be great. But all right, we're at 10 viewers right now. We're doing really great growing every day. So again, I really appreciate your time. Let's jump in to some faces. 
Uh, but before we come back to this implied line thing, I want to show you some basic uh, facial proportions, all right? Some things that we haven't really touched on just yet. All right, first off, uh, let's draw an oval like this, okay? In our previous videos, some of them we talked about like the superheroes, our head is a really basic unit of measurement. And you could say, all right, most heads are ovals. But then you'll look at somebody and you'll be like, well, that person's face is a little bit rounder. Or you might look at somebody else and it's a little bit more narrow. Right? So there are some differences. There's infinite amounts of differences. But in general, we still have this kind of oval that is, uh, you know, it's a little bit longer than it is wide. And we can use this as our, think of it as a placeholder for where some of the features of the face go. But the first line that I draw on this thing is not any facial feature. As I go directly halfway down, okay, so I think about halfway down, right in the middle, and I draw a line straight through. I do it nice and light because I'm going to erase that. And halfway down the head, believe it or not, is where the eyes are, okay? The eyes, or what we call the eye line, are going to be right in here. I'm not going to draw them in too crazy yet. Because I have another trick for you on where to put the eyes. All right, but before we draw in the eyes too much, we're going to go halfway between the chin and this eye line and make a little mark. That's typically where the bottom of the nose is going to be. And then about halfway in between this one is going to be where the mouth is. Okay, when we say mouth, I'm talking about literally that line that separates the top and bottom lip. Okay. So we'll get into the details of each feature in a minute. Now, you might still be tripped out by this idea that the eyes are halfway down the head, or maybe you've seen this before in an art lecture, but just look at my face in the picture, okay? Like, literally, right here. I'm going to scoot down a little bit, but look, my eyes are right here. This is probably about the same height as down to here. And if you want to look in the mirror... Another cool thing is get like a dry erase marker, look in the mirror and trace your own face on the mirror. It's really cool, fun exercise to do, especially when everyone's stuck inside. I won't be doing that on this cast, but it's a really fun thing to try out. Okay, let's get back to the eyes here. Um, so we've mapped these things out. Now this one is a little bit trickier to divide out, but your eye, just like we used to use the head to say uh, how tall a character might be, Think of the eye, this oval on its side, okay, as a measurement as well. So the head is typically five eyes wide. Five eyes wide. So what we're going to do is try to figure out, that means we have enough room in between the nose for one more eye. So we want to try to get this nice and divided up, okay? Looks kind of weird. And I noticed that the eye that I drew was a little bit far over. So I'm going to create my oval right here in between those lines. Okay? Again, these are basic proportions. You could get you could spend lots and lots of time. I'll show you some of the stuff I'm doing for my biological illustration stuff that actually looks at like the proportions of the skull underneath your face, right? Even before you put on muscles and skin. Okay, here we go. The eyes are general placeholders. And then from the corner of the eye, typically, if we draw an invisible line down here, your nose is typically this wide. This kind of looks like one of those crash test dummies or something, or a very kind of creepy doll at this point. All right. All right. Now, on the eye line, though, before we decide how wide the mouth is going to be, Typically, if your mouth is in a neutral setting, so like this, you know, if you smile, obviously it gets wider. But if you draw your pupil, so inside of this little oval, let's draw a little black dot. The pupil is the black hole. It's actually an opening in your eye covered with a lens that allows light into the back of your eye. And that's how you see... Uh, the thing is, is if we draw an invisible line down, that's typically how wide the mouth is. When I say wide, I mean that's typically the corner of the mouth. Okay, corner means like 
like this little uh, your your mouth isn't flat, right? It kind of wraps around your face, right? This is kind of a round area. And if you look at your teeth, like if you're looking upwards at your teeth, they have kind of an arching thing, right? So your jaws have a very interesting rounded thing over here, okay? So these are the most basic proportions. And the last thing I want to put in here is the ears, okay? Now I'm going to turn my head slightly in the cast. And notice, like if you have glasses, you can see this pretty good. The glasses sides go right into kind of the top part of the ear. The ears are about halfway down the head as well. Now, everybody's ears are shaped differently, but typically it's that top part that you can kind of fold over, right? The top part you can fold over is a little bit above that line, and then it goes down to about right here. And they end somewhere, I don't know, around like the nose so somewhere in between there all right so we got this creepy looking dude here um, and you might be wondering well he does kind of look a little bit more masculine and what are some things that like generalizations that you can see between men and women in the way that their face is drawn okay a lot of people think oh it's the shape of their of this oval it's not typically that it's typically the the jawline okay so sometimes the jawline will get a little bit more narrow and if we want to make this a little bit more feminine we can bring in the jawline a little bit more all right but don't freak out too much about that because we have these kind of demon eyes right now so let's focus on those real quick how can we make this eye a little bit more realistic? And this is where we're going to jump in to that simplification, just like this E over here. I'm going to give you some tricks to really make these eyes pop with minimal amount of work. All right, so I'm going to scoot this paper over and do a separate eye over here. Okay. Now, the most basic one is kind of like creating a target. Okay, so our iris is the first circle that we draw. Okay, that's the black area, but I'm not going to color it in just yet. I'm going to draw another circle just around that. I'm going to draw it kind of light. Okay. So that's going to be what we call the, um, sorry, the iris, right? So what did I say? Pupil is the, is the hole, that black spot. And this is the iris. Okay. The iris is kind of like a camera. It's really cool because it changes sizes especially when it's really dark it actually gets bigger to allow more light in when it's really bright it'll get smaller okay now the interesting thing about the pupil is that this is the part that sees the colored part around here doesn't really do any seeing all right it's actually the colored part is blocking out it's controlling the size of the hole all right but if we cover this up we forgot about like our eyelids Okay, our eyelids are the things that control whether or not light gets into our eyeballs or not. So if an eyelid goes below that thing, we won't be able to see. So typically, the eyelid is going to rest just above that pupil. And that's going to block out some of the iris. We're just going to see this part. Now, if you remember somebody talks about your eyeball it really is a ball right so inside your head we really do have this like ball around here that rotates right we can't see all of it and there's a bottom eyelid right here so think about what the eyelids job is it's to protect the eyeball and it's to keep the eye moist so it doesn't dry out a really interesting thing to think about is your eyes are internal organs, right? You can actually see <laughs> these internal organs, and they have to stay moist. They have to stay hydrated by your tears, okay? Let's draw the bottom eyelid. Now, the bottom eyelid's kind of fun because you can kind of see this unique detail here. Notice I haven't drawn any eyelashes yet, okay? The bottom eyelid typically goes a little bit lower. But then we're going to also put this little sliver here. And if you look closely, if you're drawing with somebody else, look closely at their bottom eyelid. Okay, you can see it's the top of their eyelid there. And you can kind of see this overlap 
in the corner of the eye. You're looking at the top of their eyelid, and then the eyelashes connect on this outer line here. So they come out like this. So drawing eyelashes can be a little bit of an art form in itself, but there are some places I want you to look. Okay, but first I want you to look at my kind of selfie cam here. Okay, I look at my fingers. Right now they're sticking out like this. They're facing up. That's how a lot of people draw their eyelids. Okay, and if you look at the SpongeBob drawing that we did, I actually forgot to draw them on. But picture this as the eye, and then the eyelids pop straight up and down like this. But if you look closely at your eyes, your eyelids or your eyelashes on the top, they're facing you. Okay. And as they go around the eye, they kind of turn off to the side, okay? And maybe if you're really surprised, they'll pop up just a little bit. Or if you have really long eyelashes or with makeup, you can kind of exaggerate that. But typically, we don't see each individual hair. So they kind of like stack on top of each other. And in the corner of the eye, you might see some more of those lashes. But right over here, they're kind of facing us directly. You might see a few, but typically in the corner is where you see the most eyelashes on a typical eye. So you don't have to draw them all the way around, but on the bottom one, you can draw them straight out as long as they attach along this outside line. Okay? Now this is where it gets really fun. I teach you how to make it look like your eyes are actually wet and reflective. So let's do this real quick. I'm going to put what we call a highlight or a reflection. I'm going to, in the upper right corner here, I'm just going to draw a light circle right here. And then I'll draw a small one right here. It's hard to see right now, but I'm going to just now color this pupil in. But don't color in those white circles that I drew. Now, even on cartoons, if you watch the SpongeBob thing, I think Joe had a good question on this. How do you draw that white spot? And really that white spot is, isn't a spot. It's actually a reflection of the light in the environment. So if you look at my glasses right now, you can see there's like this white thing kind of bouncing off my glasses. It's because I have a light right here. It's the same thing on your eye. So if you look closely and you have like, say, uh, you know, those big lights on the top of like an office building or like a rectangle, you can see a rectangular shape in the person's eye. But if you change the light source to like a window, you could see the window. You can almost look at the reflection just like a mirror. Okay, so now I have this nice reflective part of the eye. But how do we color in this? Now the iris, I like to think of it as like, if you were cutting up a pizza, all the lines kind of go towards the center. Try shading away from the center like this. It's going to need to get a little bit darker. But if you use lines that go in this direction, it's typically going to be way easier to do this. But I want to prove a point about this top eyelid. Okay, The top eyelid, again, it covered up some of this iris over here. right? We don't need that to see. We just need this opening, which is the pupil. So what I'm going to do is I want you to think about what this eyelid is. It has the same thickness as this part of the eyelid, right? It's not just paper thin. It has some beef to it. So it's actually overhanging. And what you'll notice if you look really close is there's a shadow hanging over your eye. So that part of the eyelid casts a shadow. And then in the corner you have your tear duct, okay? Something like this. That is actually the area where some of those tears go. So it's usually that pink area. You might get more of a shadow in that corner where it kind of goes around your eyeball. So we have this eye right here. And then some other details is, think of like your eyelid. There's like this, think of this as almost like a rubber band and then it's pulling up like this skin around the eye. Same thing on top. There's kind of like this rounded shape up here and then a fold typically right above the eyelid right that's kind of like that rubber band like thing and that's what's pulling that skin up and down and if it's wide open you'll see this fold up here a little bit more so we just got this eye 
and that's a really important thing to spend some time on and if there's tons of cool um, we could probably even do another video just on eyes alone but the key thing I want you to see is that that eyelid goes right above the iris especially when the person is relaxed so let's compare this eyeball to how this guy looks he looks bug-eyed his eyes are wide open and if you can see the whites of their eyes above or you can see that full iris that looks like they're really freaked out so I'm gonna do that for this guy I'm gonna draw the line just above his pupil I'm going to draw the iris in around it and then I can kind of draw that eyelid okay so we're getting the position in we didn't really dive in I showed you this a little bit bigger because it wouldn't make sense to draw this detail if it was drawing it this small right okay that brings us to the nose okay the nose is kind of tough but I want to teach you the simple nose and then I'll give you like a little bit more stuff to think about but we won't spend too much time on it today but I want you to think about the basics of that nose when it's facing us head-on okay I want you to put your finger on the tip of your nose for a second that's the most frontal you know it comes out the farthest okay but that actually happens above this line typically this is where it attaches to like your upper lip right and so I want you to think about where those nostrils are so if you think of this over here I want you to put two parentheses on here I'll draw it on this guy so if I were to draw two parentheses that's kind of the flares of the nostrils okay and then think of like the shape of like a comma right if you drew a comma in a in a sentence like this that's kind of what we're gonna do we're gonna turn it onto its side and that's gonna be the nostril but then this comma portion comes down like this that's the most basic nose you can get now you might be confused let's do one here okay it's a little bit wider on this guy but what about this top part well right here is where this line is on the eye line we typically have these powerful bones like this brow bone that goes over and protects our eyes so you'll be able to see this in a lot of uh, especially like older people um, and there's like an actual bone over here I'm drawing it for you guys right now where it pops out quite a bit and if you feel it it's like where your eyebrows are that's like this bony ridge that's where the eyebrows go because when you think about where your eye is it's in an eye socket it's actually farther back in your head and the reason is is if you're in a fight or something to protect your eyeball you have these bones one on your cheek one up here that protect that eye from getting poked right so that's a really important feature but that's where our eyebrows rest typically all right and these are very basic I know but especially since it's an eye socket it gets kind of narrow here but I'm gonna take my glasses off but I want you to take a finger start off and feel that brow bone right here and then put one right in this like kind of that low pocket of the nose you can feel that it goes underneath and then it comes out into the nose so this is kind of that low point kind of that bridge of your nose and it comes out a little bit all right and there's typically either like a round shape that pops out here okay or it kind of has you know shape that it's almost flat on the bottom it breaks down some of people have kind of a narrower ridge everyone's nose is unique but I want you to know that if you're at least in the right area now you don't have to think about oh man where did, how big should I make this nose how uh, wide how you know whatever you can just experiment with some of those things in there and last thing I want to teach you the fast mouth okay and let's just debunk some common mistakes from the mouth first because I see a lot of this and I, especially when I was drawing in my classroom with my students who are in about middle school okay First off, people get trained early on to do the smiley face. That's the most 
basic, right? We use that everywhere. But what is this representing, okay? It's the line in between two lips. And your lips are actually soft tissues, right? They're actually like kind of lumpy. We have a top lip and a bottom lip. So some people will, you know, learn how to draw something like this. Okay, and that's not too bad. But depending on how you draw this line in between here, it can be kind of flat, right? We have these like nice round lips and this doesn't really tell us anything. And it gets really awkward when we try to do the same thing on like a smile, right? So if we do a smile shape, end up with a shape like this. There's something weird about it. And that is, is that especially when you try to smile, this top lip all of a sudden gets really thick. Now, some people have different weights on their lips, or like what I mean weight is like size, but very, most often, your top lip is going to be thinner than the bottom lip, especially when they're smiling, okay? So we're gonna talk about that shape, and I'm gonna give you, instead of drawing this, okay, it's gonna be just about as simple, but it'll be a little bit more accurate. So I want you to think about if you're gonna draw like, a very stereotypical beach and you wanted to draw a seagull flying in the distance you know we do this shape that's gonna come in handy for us we're also gonna need a parentheses shape like we've been doing in a lot of things okay and another curve that's a little bit larger but this should be pretty good so we're gonna start off with a shallow seagull shape right like this I know this seems odd especially because we don't think about our mouths as um, we think of them more as a straight line or like this, but just bear with me here. But before we draw this next line, I want to take your pinky and put it right underneath your nose and feel that little uh, definition there. It's like an indentation, right? You pull that off. That is going to be where we put the parentheses. Okay, some people call that like Cupid's, uh, was it Cupid's bow or something like that? It's like the that what we're trying to draw on this lip but it's typically an arch like this it's not so sharp okay and we're not putting it very far away but then at the bottom I'd say make it a little bit wider here's gonna be the bottom lip here okay and we're gonna be drawing some uh, we're gonna use this to draw the lips now the mistake that we made over here is that we think that the lip goes all the way to the corner of the mouth. That's very odd, right? You can't really see it in this picture, for example, but the lip, especially the bottom lip, ends earlier over here. We're not going to take it all the way to the corner of that lip or that line. The top lip is kind of overhanging, so we just kind of blend this in over here what is this kind of representing it's there's like almost like a lobe in a lot of people's top lip that kind of demonstrate you can soften that up a little bit but this also does something to make it look like the bottom lip is round itself this bottom lip is a little bit thick for us right now but that's okay but then if you want somebody to be ever notice like well, I don't want the person smiling with teeth, right? So it's a little like kind of artificial, but you see kind of like an upturned, you know, closed mouth. Easy way to do that is by looking at the corner of the mouth. If you tip up the corner like this, it typically has a happier look than if you did the opposite. So if you think of like this classic smile and then people usually draw something like this on there, that's kind of what they're focusing on it's this corner of the mouth it tells you a lot about the emotion of the person and the last thing I want to share about this mouth is that let's look at the head from the side real quick okay if I drew out here's a forehead uh, and this brow bone there's the nose comes out like this okay and before I draw the mouth and stuff I'm gonna draw an angled line like this I want to show you how our lips exist, okay? Typically, when I come down like this, the top lip is farther up over the bottom lip. 
the chin kind of matches this line. Okay, so if that's the case, the, the top lip is relatively large, but it's facing down. We're seeing it at an angle. So like, you know, for example, if I took, you know, this piece of paper here, and then, you know, here's my bottom lip, and it's facing us, but the top lip is facing us up here, but it tilts down. It seems like from the top to the bottom, it actually flattens out. That's what's happening. And then another way we can show that is by shading it in. So the top lip is typically always in a shadow because the light, if it's from coming from the top, won't get to it. All right? And that starts to look like a three-dimensional mouth. Another trick is you can kind of shade in that little divot there, right? Because it kind of comes out. Now we have like this feature of the mouth. And then I'd like to add a little bit of shading at the corner of the mouth. That pushes the corners back into the cheeks there. And then underneath the top lip, there's usually a shadow too, because it's overhanging. All right, and that leads into the chin. So what did we do? We took basically the same amount of lines and we just added a few more details and thought about it, okay? Especially the fact that this top lip is hanging over, in most cases, the bottom lip. So let's draw that on our guy here, okay? Let's put in that Cupid's bow type shape. Okay, I'm going to add this right here. Here's my bottom lip. I'm going to put an upturned corner of the mouth. Put some shading in. That's starting to look a lot better, right? Now I've certainly added some lines that we can get rid of here that wouldn't be as dark. But for the most part, most of these things even without too much shading, we've been able to add these features. Now the problem is, is this person is also bald right now. So what about the hair? Now typically I want you to think about, since our eyes are halfway down, the thing is, is like if you had bangs, they might come down lower, but for most people's hairline, it starts about right here. Okay? It's different for everyone, and the shape is different. Sometimes it's a, what we call a widow's peak, where it kind of comes around like this. Swoops in, you get some sideburns maybe. Now if somebody had really short hair, this would work, but typically our hair does pop off of our skull a little bit. So you might, for a male haircut, you might get something like this. Right? Because there's some volume to it or something like I definitely have some volume to this so that's where my hair is is not the skull right but you can start to see how we've put together this face okay we weren't looking at a picture we used some basic things right so we learned how to make a basic eye that had some shading in it we didn't even put our little shiny stuff in there because it's a little small but if I were to draw this larger, this is a great way to make this thing look extremely realistic. We also constructed a mouth using some very basic shapes, the seagull shape and uh, parentheses and a little bit of shading to make this look a little bit more realistic. But then we also created a nose, which I call the parentheses and comma method to really do that. Um, and we're on our way. We've placed everything in the right spot. All right. So does uh, does anyone have any questions or things they want me to cover right now? I got about 15 more minutes um, and I, I have a few ideas. But if you have something in mind or any questions, please put those in the chat right now. I'd love to um, love to solve that stuff. I'll get a fresh sheet. Well, maybe we'll do a larger one. I'm going to drink a little bit of coffee. I don't know about you guys, but not being like on a normal schedule is like 
kind of messing with me. I've been up late, like, slept in today, but at least I made it up for this. So I hope you guys are doing it all right. So I'm going to start off with that oval shape we did before. Oh, Mike has a question about ears. We didn't really cover those, but let's, uh, let's try it again. I will talk a little bit. Part of the reason is because if you're looking straight at the camera, you're not going to see too much of the ears. Sometimes they're covered by hair, especially if you have long hair, right? But if you were to do something from the side, you can start to see them. That's what we call a three quarter view. All right, Arthur, you got a question. How did I learn this stuff? I'll tell you what, practice. I used to go to the library when I was a kid, get um, drawing books out. Now that we have YouTube, I bet, you know, I actually have another video on drawing the face. That's a good way to practice. But honestly, I've just been practicing for years and years. I'm 32 right now. I decided to study art, you know, in college, like to study at college when I was a senior. But before that, I was just drawing as much as possible. And if you're just getting started, starting with the face can be frustrating. It is the most, like I'm still learning techniques for drawing the face. So if you feel like this is overwhelming, believe me, even professional artists are constantly stressed about it. But it's not about getting perfection. It's about getting um, better and better every time you try. So please know that you don't have to expect perfection at the beginning. Enjoy the process, right? Paper is cheap. Pencils are cheap. And literally just crank it out. Believe me, you'll see improvement. If you do 10 of these drawings, by the 10th one, you won't even recognize the drawings you were doing when you first started. Just apply some good principles and proportions and you'll be on your way, okay? Because once you master some, you'll ask better questions like, oh yeah, just like Mike's question, why, why didn't we go over the ears? You know, when you start to ask that question, you're like, oh yeah, I guess I have to learn how to draw the head when it's slightly turned. And we can do a video on that. But for today, I want to keep it somewhat simple. All right, here we go. Let's do a larger drawing. And this is a pretty light oval. I like to keep them light because I might refine those, you know, features of the chin a little bit later. Let's add in. Let's do a review. We're going to do that light line halfway down the head. Okay. Now that is what we call the eye line. And... Before I put the eyes in, I'm just going to divide from here to the chin. That's going to be approximately where the bottom of the nose is going to be. And then a line that's right in between. It's not always exact. Let me just say that one more time. These are guidelines, not scientific. Everyone's face is unique, so you might have to adjust. That's why I keep them pretty light. And then let's divide up the eyes, okay? Now we're going from the actual width of the head. But before, we didn't really talk about this before, remember, nobody's head is flat along their face, right? Nobody just like, you know, it's a round shape. So thing is, is like this is kind of, this part is farther away. It's farther around our head. So just keep that in mind. But for this measurement, we're just trying to divide it up into five equal shapes. Sometimes you have to adjust. That's why I draw it nice and light. That uh, looks all right. So, uh, yeah, Arthur, I know that it's it seems like a long time, but like I said, I, the whole point of me doing this is I want you guys to be able to enjoy it. Cut yourself a lot of slack. It's literally, you know, when you're faced with, like, you can only play so many video games. Like, when you actually get to create this stuff and really start thinking about it, it's more about, like, the time you get to spend on your own you just kind of fall in love with, you know, I'll be honest, it's kind of a struggle, but it's like, you know how when you do like a good workout or you accomplish something after a lot of hard work, it feels really good. That's what art is. And you can literally pick up a piece of paper at any point and get that same feeling. And that's really what artists are like almost addicted to. It's like that rush of like, all right, I'm going to work hard on this. And when it turns out nice, you know, it's a reward. Okay. All right, so I'm adding these ovals in where the eyes are going to be. We still have a few more measurements, keeping it pretty light. Let's talk about where the edge of the nose is going to be. That's the corner of the eyes. I drop those down. I'm just going to go ahead and put those parentheses in right about there, just above that line, I'd say. 
Um, I'm going to wait like a little bit to do too much with that. And let's put our pupils in. So those are the black circles in our eyes. And if you're freaked out by this person right now, so am I. But we're going to draw an iris around it. And we're going to make him look a little bit less bugged out. And that is one way to tell. Like if somebody is looking at you like this, I would say run. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or you're in a lot of trouble. I don't know. So this is the thing. Let's look at his, the eyelid. It's going to start right above that pupil. And it's just kind of like a parentheses line. Try to make it the same width. Okay. Now, if the eyelids get lower and they're covering part of the pupil, you'll notice that person is probably just waking up. They're sleepy. Okay. That's another way to show if somebody's really tired is like they're the that top eyelid lowers even more. Okay. And how about the mouth? Well, I am going to put this. Oh yeah, the. The irises are going to tell us where the corners of the mouth is. So just about here. So instead, I'm going to put that seagull shape right here. All right. This guy's looking pretty sad, honestly. <laughs> we'll try to spice it up a little bit. To make him look a little bit happier, I'm going to put these kind of an upturned mark on the side. And I'll put that Cupid's bow in there. And then his lower lip. Oh man, I don't know how that looks. I'm going to redraw that. Again, your eraser is your best friend, but don't obsess too much about like mistakes, all right? And I think the reason it looks a little weird is because I haven't shaded in that top lip yet. So I'm connecting it with that Cupid's bow over there. So I'm going to shade it in. All right. Look a little bit better. Let's add some nostrils in here. So it's kind of like a little oval that is the the uh, nostril. And that tail of the comma that right there. That gives us that shape. Now if you're not happy with this very basic nose, believe me, the nose is like really subtle. Um, and that's okay. I just want you guys to know that there's always a new thing to learn. I'm adding that shading in the corners of the mouth. We'll see if we can get that. And I'm going to clean up some of these lines for you so we can kind of get to business on making this look a little bit more realistic. Maybe trying to make this look a little bit more feminine. All right. So now how about this? with your hair sometimes it just looks a little bit spooky to have this be all blank right because the ear is going to connect right over here stop right about there not going to spend too much detail on this just yet but let's put in where the eyelids are going to be okay and one of the ways you can do that is just like we did the pupil and then the iris draw like a circle very lightly around the eye socket like that's where the eyes like are it's like an eyeball right and it's kind of surrounded by that bony ridge on the top here that protects it that's going to be the eyelid or I'm sorry not eyelid eyebrow all right that's not incredibly Now, when I talked about, like in the title, that this is more of a simple way, we're not doing much shading here, are we? So there are certain things, like especially the nose, it's kind of a soft shape that are hard to draw without shading. But we, these lines that we drew are representing what are typically the darkest shadows in the nose, okay? So 
let's go to something that's going to help us. Let's put in some hair lines. So over here, I'm going to put where the hair usually goes, slightly below the eye line. It goes out and then it curves around typically to somewhere over here. This guy looks like it's got like a buzz cut. One thing I want to point out, and if you're interested, if you're trying to draw like a baby, the proportions of their eyes to their head are totally different. This is typically for like a, an adult. And if you can, sometimes there's some changes in proportions. Like typically younger people have rounder features, especially around like the um, jaws. And babies or younger people have larger eyes in comparison to their head. There's all sorts of <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, Joe's saying that he has a unibrow. Yes, you could make a unibrow if you wanted to. <laughs> but I don't know if we, this person deserves it. All right, let's get rid of these lines. He kind of looks like he has face tattoos or something. All right, so let's add like a hairdo. Let's see if we can add maybe more of a... Let's try to turn this more into like a female look. So for a hairdo, a lot of times when the hair is kind of off to the side, if we were to give this person, um, let's think about the hair, it's almost kind of go, go, sweeping across the face, going down, maybe some air, hair going behind the ear, and then coming back out. And then maybe there's some more hair going across. Might not get that much volume, but this one is going to get covered up, so this ear is not going to be seen. But then you might see the hair over here. If we narrow up this jawline a little bit, it might look a little bit more feminine. Drawing hair is typically a little bit more advanced. But let's push this corner of the mouth up a little bit, maybe, to show a little bit more of a smile. Let's put this bottom eyelid in. We didn't really do that. Because then we can put some... I'm going to just trim off this uh, iris detail. Honestly, these eyes kind of look like if she was like Billie Eilish or something, kind of like that <laughs> low-key, uh, chilled out, kind of serious vibe. All right, let's add some eyelashes. So I'm starting off with the outer corner there, making it a little bit darker and a few down at the bottom on the outer side. She might look more like a goth now that I think about it. It's like kind of punk. <laughs> okay, then it can help to add this line above below those eyes that's kind of like a fold in the skin sometimes even just like a little bit of a thing here and maybe some edge of the nose there now you might be sitting here being like why is this professional artist drawing this person there's something a little bit off about <laughs> this kind of character well, first off, two things I want you to know is there's a lot of different approaches to drawing. Number one, like what we just did, this is called constructive approach. Think of a construction of a house. We're building it from the ground up using materials that we have. Let's say it's the first building in the world. We, or like it's the first building in our town. We'd have nothing to compare it to. Well, this is based on ideas and we put together those relationships. Whereas, you know, when I was showing you those pictures at the beginning, I had something to compare to. I was drawing based on observation. Was I thinking about all these proportions? Yes. 
were they helping me guide how I drew that picture? Of course. But there are very few people that can just instantly come up with a unique face from memory or from creativity that's going to make this look super realistic. I'm just showing you some of the underlying ideas on how to organize your drawing. And in reality, that's the way to go. Is This is your toolkit, okay? The tools aren't going to build the building by themselves. You have to hold the tools and look at it and make decisions on the construction site to decide, okay, does this rule apply? Should I, what tool should I use to get this thing done? But the thing is, is like using some of these tools, this mouth, when you've mastered this and you can use that in one situation, you realize, oh man, this mouth isn't going to work for this one. You're going to say, oh, I better do some more research. I might have to look at people's mouths a little bit more closely. That's what the journey of being an artist is about. You never have it all figured out. You're always going to have to go back to the picture. Or you're going to have to ask your friend to sit there and pose and you draw their face or you ask for, you know, you take pictures of yourself in the mirror, whatever it is, or change the lighting. That's the fantasy of, of, wor of working as an artist is just being able to get the opportunity to study these things because it's beautiful, right? Everybody is different and we're always changing every day. So even if you did a self-portrait a year ago, you're going to change. Um, so that about does it for the simple forms of the face. Um, and I want you guys to just, you know, use this as much as possible. If you try one of these things, I know sometimes it can be humbling or maybe you're really excited about it. Please, please, please post that stuff stuff on my uh on your instagram and then tag me at art with anderson there's underscores in between <clears throat> but i want you guys to uh also check the stories because i do put posts out there so like if i'm asking for people to send me their photo to draw from on the live cast that would be great and uh i want to thank everyone who tuned in today um you know arthur roberta mike joe joe and um jim antonia thanks again I really hope you guys enjoyed it today, and I'll be looking forward to doing our next episode tomorrow. Hope to see you then. So uh, please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification button if you want to be alerted every time that I'm about to go live. And uh, if you know anyone who would find these things fun or beneficial, please uh, share them for me. We're trying to build a nice community, and the bit more the merrier. So thanks again. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.